morning everyone welcome back to another video it is wow birds wow <laughs> it's just gone seven o'clock in the morning and i am out here doing a little bit of harvesting i was hoping this would be a little bit more of a peaceful morning harvest but um yeah but yeah currently the bottle brush flowers are flowering the calistamon and when that happens, the lorikeets go absolutely just rambunctious is probably the correct word. <laughs> a little bit too loud, kind of crazy. Anyway, my job this morning is to come out and just harvest some of this spinach here that I want to freeze and use for some smoothies. So I'm going to do that. I'll probably add some nice music over the top of this. Um, but for today, we're going to be doing a garden with me video. So I'm going to roost is going now <laughs> so i'm going to bring you around in the garden and share what i get up to today i've got quite a few things to do including um, harvesting one of my compost bins um, tearing out some flowers replanting new ones there's lots to do so i really hope you enjoy today's video lots of bug holes but it's completely fine to eat I think this will do for this morning. I did have this crop netted because, well, shaded, I suppose, because we had those really hot days over like they're around 35, 36 degrees. This is English spinach and it seems to be holding up pretty well. So I'm very happy with this crop so far. Another thing that I would really like to do today is this bed here. I need to take out all of the ranunculus that have gone over in there and just put some fresh compost over it so that I can plant uh, some of my dahlias in this bed. So these are the first kind of two beds in the flower farm. The majority of all the flowers are down there where I was harvesting the spinach. Um, but these had ranunculus and I've got anemones over there. These are pretty much all gone over as well. Um, they're all starting to kind of go to seed so that might be the job for another day but today's job is to take out all of these sorry about the birds it's going to be quite loud um you can see all the plants are just diseased and pretty gross so yeah i'm going to work on this to tear all these out pop them down the back somewhere just in a pile i'm not going to be adding these to my usual compost pile because i don't want to spread any disease into that I think we're going to switch to a voiceover now and I'm going to chat through what I am working on throughout this video purely because I had so much to do and it is just easier for me to film a voiceover because the birds as you would have heard are pretty crazy on this day. First of all, I am removing all of the ranunculus from this garden bed. You can see here I am wearing a mask and I just like to protect myself as much as I can in uh, the garden. So I like to wear protective gloves, boots, clothing, dust mask, anything I can. Um, it really is super important to be worrying about your physical health, particularly if you are a gardener and you rely on your physical health uh, to both make money and enjoy gardening. So I like to wear a mask um, just because any of the mold can impact your respiratory system and I don't really want that. So 
I was removing all of the ranunculus and then I'm just lightly airing the soil with a garden fork, not necessarily turning over the soil, just adding a bit of air into the soil. Next, I am heading over to my compost bins and these are my favorite compost bins to use in the garden to compost mainly kitchen scraps. Um, so I'm going to be removing this one that has been sitting for a few months and is now ready to use. I usually like to use compost when I have it available. Obviously I would like to create so much more compost than I do currently, um, but I use this compost mainly as a rough mulch over the garden. You can see here there are lots of bits of sticks and eggshells and food scraps that kind of aren't fully broken down, but the mix is at a point where it doesn't smell. Um, it's perfectly fine to use on the garden. It's going to continue breaking down and is going to be that protective layer over the soil um, to kind of act both as a mulch and also there are so many worm castings within this mix you can see how many worms there are as I am taking this compost out. It's full of microbes, bacteria uh, and all the good stuff that a garden is going to enjoy, um, that the soil life is going to enjoy and that your plants will then uptake as well. I have so many videos on how to make compost and the benefits of compost. I'll link a few in the description box if you're interested in kind of how to know when to harvest one um, and how to start a new compost. I kind of chat through that in this video as well. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be taking the compost out and then overlaying it onto this garden bed here. Now, because compost is really very valuable in my garden, I really don't produce as much as I would like. I'm only going to be using a really thin layer over this garden bed. I know it already has nutrients. I've been adding worm castings to it. It's had sugarcane mulch on it before, so it has really good nutrients within this soil already. Uh, but I'm just topping it up with this compost, adding a really thin layer over the top. Um, and again, that's just to kind of boost the nutrients as well as uh, act as a mulch for all of that goodness that is below the soil. I am also adding some garden lime. I usually add this whenever I am planting or redoing any of my garden beds and that's just to raise the pH levels a little bit. We have very acid or acidic soils uh, in our area and adding this is just going to add a little bit more of that alkalinity that I need to have a bit more of a balanced pH in our soils. Often when you add compost, it is going to be acidic, particularly if you're using a rough compost. So that's why I like to use garden lime just to sweeten up the mixture a little bit uh, and to balance that pH. After this, the weather took a little bit of a turn. So I ended up having a break from gardening and um, went inside for some morning tea, spent a bit of time with the cats uh, before I headed back out into the drizzly, rainy weather. Thank <laughs> you. 
after doing a little bit of a strawberry harvest and a change of clothing to be a little bit more appropriate for the cold and rainy weather that we were getting uh, at this time of the day, I am going to be clearing a little area in my cottage garden to plant some cucumbers. I love the idea of integrating vegetables and fruits in with flowers to create a little bit more of a wild and beautiful cottage garden. And this is pretty much what I have done here, um, which all used to just be lawn. It used to be plain grass um, and we overlaid some areas with cardboard and compost and built some no dig beds to create these cottage gardens. They're a little bit wild and um, all over the place, but that's what I love about gardening. Uh, and I'm slowly kind of taking back different areas by clearing them. And um, you'll see here overlaying compost to just kind of manage some of the areas a little bit more uh, and to be more productive to grow food. I have food growing all through this cottage garden. You can see some leeks behind me here uh, and I'm going to be adding a lot more veggies throughout summer here. I should note that pretty much every time I am prepping a garden bed like this, I'm doing similar kind of steps. So I'm either using compost like this or worm castings or um, horse manure that has been rotting down for a little bit. It's pretty much what I do whenever I'm prepping a garden bed is I will overlay it with a little bit of compost or worm castings just to give a bit more of a boost. Obviously when you're growing plants, they are then taking nutrients out of the soil uh, and either you're eating some of those nutrients or they're being uptaken for of the plant to then produce food so it's always a good idea just to add a little bit of nutrients back in whenever you're going to be planting something just to ensure that you have that balance of nutrients in your soil I'm planting some of these burpless cucumbers. I have never grown these before. These were left over from a garden job that I was working on um, creating a vegetable garden. So decided to plant them uh, and I have put in some uh, wooden stakes here and eventually I will tie some string, kind of like weave them through the stakes uh, to create a little bit of support for these cucumbers. But that's a job for another day. I just needed to get them planted today and get the stakes in. Uh, and then after I plant these, I'm going to mulch with sugarcane mulch um, to, yeah, hopefully have a little productive cucumber patch. And I will update you on how it goes. I, um, I'm not too sure how the support's going to go, but we'll see. It's just a very rudimentary support. Um, but yeah, I will tie some string up on it as the cucumbers grow to support them. Right, the next job was to restart a compost bin and I've done a whole video on this in depth of how to start a compost from scratch, ingredients that you might want to use, um, but I am going to be moving the compost from where it originally was to a new area where it was I'm going to be doing some planting in there to make the most of nutrients but it's really simple I just lay some cardboard down I secure the compost bin just using some like tent pegs um, that I have so many around in one of the sheds so I just chose some of those to secure it down um, the cardboard ensures that grass isn't going to take over um, the insides of the compost bin um, I will mulch over the cardboard as well but then the first thing that I'm doing is adding in some sticks these are really porous sticks these are hydrangea um, cuttings and this is going to allow a lot of air on the base of the compost bin air is really crucial when you're making compost so I always start with a really coarse layer 
And then I'm just adding all of the weeds and um, garden scraps that I took out before I was planting those cucumbers. Uh, so that's just gonna get the compost started and get it going straight away. And then as uh, I need, I'll add all of my kitchen scraps. I always add a bit of moisture in there, a bit of water, um, and yeah, just keep topping it up and it's all ready to go. I had quite a few sunflower seedlings left over. This is just, I was trialing growing them in a tray like this and I really like it. So I'm going to be doing my successions in this tray. I saved some evening sun sunflower seeds. I think that's what they're called. Um, so I'm planting those towards the back fairly densely uh, because we do get high winds in this area. I might have to support them, but I'll see how they go. And then I'm doing a row of dwarf sunflowers up the front just to give a little bit of height difference and um, just make the most of this nutrients that I have where the compost bin was and also just to hide a little bit of the shed too. After that I needed to go and plant some snapdragons down in the flower farm area. So I have a full tray of these. These are just mixed snapdragons. I think a lot of them are going to be pink and white um, and I'm going to be planting those. I like to choose something to plant and make it really manageable for myself. Um, every few days or at least once a week I will have one day where I dedicate um, a job of planting. Um, before I plant the snapdragons, I'm also just going to be topping up some of the beans that I had sown. I did sow some bean seeds in here that I think was in another video. Um, I also tried sowing some carrots in here, which didn't really work too well. I think I have a lot of slugs in this area and they just kind of like hide under the wood and the bricks. I kind of needed it though to be able to net it um, and shade it from the hot sun that we were having. So yeah, I wasn't really winning with this patch, but I did start some bean seeds um, as seedlings. So I had a few left over that I could fill in the spots where the slugs definitely got the bean seedlings or the bean seeds that were germinating. I have a mixture of Royal Burgundy and uh, Strike bush beans. I think that's what they're called. Yeah. They're just a low bush bean. They don't need any support. And I find these are just my favorite to grow. So I've got a mix of red and green beans. Um, and this is going to be my little veggie patch down in the flower farm. Probably plant some more as I go. Uh, this was just kind of a trial to see whether it was warm enough to have beans in the ground and they seem really happy. So I'll continue to plant those. Uh, and then I had some like little tomato seedlings that you can see in the corner that were popping up. They had just self-sown. They're most likely Roma tomatoes. And I'll just keep them there because the carrots really didn't work out in that position. I'm gonna be planting some snapdragons here down um, in the bed where I already have some snapdragons. And I plant these really fairly densely because um, of our high winds. I want them to be nice and dense so that um, they're less likely to fall over. Um, and yeah, I just need a lot of flowers. So I've got to plant a lot of seedlings. I spent quite a bit of time doing this, so I didn't film at all, but you get the kind of general gist of what I'm doing, planting lots of seedlings until the entire row was all full and ready to grow. And then after yet another wardrobe change, the sun decided to come out again. Uh, I needed to harvest a few flowers for a special order that I was doing. I've been focusing on some special orders lately just because I haven't had a lot of bulk flowers and I've also just really been enjoying doing special orders. I find I can be really creative, spend a little bit more time um, and obviously they're a bit more of a premium product so I'm charging a lot more than I am for just the market bouquets. So I'm just harvesting a few flowers to create a really nice bunch. 
and I thought I would leave you here with this video um, just to yeah share the little flower harvest I harvested before some status I'm harvesting cosmos now um, and I also need to pick a few more things like some billy buttons and I add some snapdragons into the bouquet so I thought I would leave you here with a little bit of a harvest I really appreciate you watching this video and joining me for a little garden with me. If you would like to see some more content, I do have a Patreon page where I upload extra flower farming content and a little bit more um, personal videos about my life and um, yeah, how I'm feeling about running a small business, some travel vlogs in there. Uh, and it's a great way to support me financially if you can um, but if not i truly appreciate you just being here watching this video uh, liking and subscribing and commenting really does help me out gets me on that magical algorithm that i have no idea about but i know that i would really like to continue sharing these videos about gardening and flower farming for the world to see one note before I go, I am cutting these straw flowers very low to the ground and that's just because I want lots of side shoots. So that's what I'm doing here, doing a pretty harsh cut uh, at the very start to get a few of these first flushes of straw flowers. So yep, just wanted to leave you with that. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to be here and watch this video. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and until my next one. Happy gardening everyone. Bye.